just give me the committee to order. Okay. Um, okay, can we have a roll call, please? Chair Ozak? Here. Vice Chair Hart? Member 24? Here. Member Chaplin? Here. Member Desart? Member Zay? Here. Okay, any public comment? No? All right. Next, I'm going to move for approval of the uh, minutes for the committee, Tuesday, October 18th, 2022. Second. Any comments, changes? All in favor? Aye. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, next, move to accept payment of claims. Second. And all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Number seven, we have a professional services agreement. It moved for approval of GTP 0322, recommendation for the approval of a contract to STATE testing for professional materials testing and engineering services upon request of the Division of Transportation, $84,000, facilities management, $8,000, and stormwater management, $8,000 for a total contract not to exceed $100,000, professional services vetted through a qualification-based selection process. Okay, second. Uh, any questions about this? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Uh, next up, I'm going to move for approval of FMP 030122, recommendation for the approval of a contract issued to Home Depot USA, uh, doing business doing business as the Home Depot Pro to furnish and deliver housekeeping supplies and cleaning chemicals as needed for the county campus for facilities management for the period November 9, 2022 through October 31st, 2025, for a total contract amount not to exceed $90,000. Uh, contract led pursuant to Intergovernmental Cooperation Act. Okay. Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Uh, I now move for approval of 2022-91 recommendation for the approval of contract to Johnson Controls Incorporated to provide a planned service agreement to maintain the building automation system at the power plant for facilities management for the period December 1st, 2022 through November 30th, 2023 for a contract total amount not to exceed $21,433.53 contract led through pursuant to Intergovernmental Cooperation Act. I have a second. Any questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, and I move for approval of a bid, FMP 030222. Recommendation for the approval of a contract to Valdez Supply to furnish and deliver restroom tissue and paper towels to the Judicial Office Facility, JTK Administration <laughs> Building, and the jail on a monthly basis, and as needed for the Power Plant Children's Center Office of Emergency Management and Coroner's Office for facilities management for a period December 1st, 2022 through November 30th, 2023 for a total contract amount not to exceed $131,061.70. And I have a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. I move approval for a grant proposal notification. All right, move for to accept a grant proposal notification, electrical and operating infrastructure improvements second. for the wastewater treatments plants, $10,200,000. Okay, any comments or questions about this? All in favor? Aye. Okay. Now move for approval of FMP 030322, recommendation for the approval of a contract to Azteca Systems LLC for asset management software licenses for stormwater management, $96,314.80, public works, $96,314.80, and the Division of Transportation, $16,750.40, for a contract total not to exceed $209,380, other professional services not subject to competitive bidding, vendor selected pursuant to DuPage County Code. I have a second. Any comments or questions? All in favor? Aye. All right. Okay. Uh, next, I move to accept as informational. Pursuant to DTR 0306A22, vehicle replacement purchase orders for facilities management for FY 2023 and FY 2024 have been issued through National Auto Fleet Group in the amount of $144,720.79. And next, also, meter replacement program. Second. Okay. Okay, and I thought you did, so I'm going to turn it over to Nick about the meter replacement program. So, uh, as the committee will recall, we have undertaken uh, meter replacement within the Public Works Department. It's uh, most of our meters are over 30 years old, so has been done for a very long time. Um, Stan was instrumental in getting that off the ground. We've partnered with uh, 
um, Woodridge, uh, Darian, Lyle to, to also help them with meter replacement. And Stan, I don't know if you wanted to give a quick update where we're at with numbers, that'd be great. Just to, it's going remarkably well. Sure. So uh, each of the respective municipalities, uh, the power <coughs> supplier owns the meter. So they're responsible for placing their own meters. Right now, uh, we, we uh, the county had, had 3,842 meters to replace. And Daring has also started at this time. Uh, they're replacing approximately 9,000 meters. Uh, we started on uh, the first install was on July 8th. Uh, at this point, we're 96% complete. Uh, we have about 160 left to go. But one of the biggest reasons we want to give you an update as we get close to the end and we're closing out the project, we're a plumbing contractor. There's still a number of non responsive accounts. And uh, the it can eventually escalate the potential suspension of service if they do not comply with the meter uh, change out program. So uh, we uh, work with the state's attorney's office. Uh, last Friday, we sent out 88 letters to the uh, non-responsive uh, customers. Uh, nine scheduled yesterday. Uh, we still have 79 left to go. All of these customers have uh, thus far received eight uh, pieces of communication, including a, a door knock letter uh, left at their residence. Uh, right now, we are scheduled to start uh, suspension of services the week of November 14th. Uh, the last step before we do that, uh, we are going to make one more run and knocking on doors uh, 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 just to uh, yeah, get them to make appointments as well as continue to make phone calls if we have uh, phone numbers on, on account. Uh, at the end of the day, once this is all done, uh, we will have an AMI system. So in addition to reader, uh, need new meters, we're gonna have an AMI system eliminating the uh, need to have meter readers go to uh, <laughs> customers' residents. Uh, clearly a, a, a safety thing in the winter, especially with ice, uh, uh, it, it, the new system will reduce cost uh, and reduce the amount of vehicles we need to uh, go out to each resident uh, in each area of the cover uh, quite a large uh, service area. So AMI for the group. Uh, advanced metering infrastructure. Okay. So meters have a smart point. Generally, the smart point uh, is on the outside of the house, attached by wire to the meter, and they will communicate to four antennas installed on uh, the Page County water towers. Does non-responsive mean they're not paying their bills? Uh, that's the ironic thing. They are paying their bills because if not, we shut them off for paying their bills. Uh, there's a yeah. I was going to say there's another way to get their attention, and that would be to shut their water off. That, that's that the ultimate. Right. So non response You don't want to do that. No, but. we are doing everything. If anybody calls and says, "Listen, I don't want to deal with the meter until January," we'll work with them. We just need them to call us. We've done numerous communication pieces because we need to get in their home to switch out the meter. And so <laughs> right now we're down to 160. That we haven't done we sent out 88 notices they just need to call us to set up anything any communication and so that's what we're trying to achieve do we have to have a response to change the meter out we have to get in the race yeah well you can't you can't shut the water off well if they're paying the bill so well, i mean can we uh, i mean that's can we put a service charge on them like a have the service charge if they don't allow us in. The the ordinance does allow shutoff for if we if we're not allowed to switch out a meter. Uh, we're trying everything we can. Uh, that's everything we're we, that's the last <laughs> thing we want to do. I mean that's not what we want to achieve. And hopefully the nice thing is we sent out the group of eighty eight. We had nine responses right away. So hopefully we'll we'll whittle it down and we will physically knock on the doors at nights on the weekends whatever we can before we get to that point did the letter indicate a date that the service could be shut yes yes okay did the letter come from facilities or from the state's attorney's office um, you was from patrick Stacey, 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 Stacey. office. it was signed by me yeah. <laughs> we're gone monday <laughs> okay um thank you any other questions or comments Okay, thanks for that update. Uh, going. Thank you.
Okay, now we have a presentation. Campus okay. stormwater detention work. So I will, uh, as we all know, a lot of projects on uh, campus that we've got planned in the future. A lot of different departments, DOT, they're building, animal services, everything else. We have worked, Tim has worked closely with stormwater and uh, especially Carrie Bear, Jen Boyer. And they are here to give an update. Stormwater <laughs> does uh, deliver again, so thank you. But they'll give an update on our detention status and where we're going to go in the future. <coughs> so please take it away. Hi. I'm Jen Boyer, um, and with me is Carrie Bear. Carrie is a senior project engineer, and I am an environmental projects coordinator, and we both work with stormwater management. <laughs> uh, we're here to um, update you on facilities campus wide approach to um, detention on campus for the uh, capital projects that we have coming up. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> a little bit. Um, this is the extent of our campus. Facilities manages 193 acres, 22 of which are planted with native vegetation. Um, but our natural areas, most of them are on the far west side, um, which actually extends all the way to Beecher Avenue in Winfield. Next slide, please. We have six capital projects coming up um, in the next two years that will be constructed by various departments. Uh, we expect these projects to require approximately nine acre feet of new detention. Um, those projects and coordinates with the letters there um, on the map are improvements to the Child Advocacy Center and the Care Center, uh, reconfiguration of DOT's operations and office space, expansion of animal services facility, um, so new ADA parking at the 421 building and possibly some uh, paving of parking at the fairgrounds. So facilities has adopted a campus wide approach to detention design. Um, they've hired one engineer, one um, consulting engineer, and that has allowed us to take advantage of an economy of scale. So we have one point of contact, we have one stormwater model, and most important, we have um, construction of detention in centralized locations, which is more efficient and economical to do in one place. And we also have the potential to create detention credit for future projects. So that's sort of in our back pocket. We're hoping we can do that. Um, we intend to get one permit through the city of Wheaton. We do have some work um, in Wheatfield, but um, the village has agreed to allow <coughs> Wheaton to review that stormwater permit. So even though we have a large campus, um, it's getting a little bit tight and this slide is a little bit busy, but we wanted to show you where we are already storing water here at, uh, at the Wheaton campus. So the pink and it's associated green and blue is the flood plain and the floodway of Windhill Creek, which interestingly flows south to north here instead of north to south, which is what most creeks in DuPage County do. Um, the other blue and green areas are stormwater detention that um, already exists here on site. And the arrows kind of give you an idea of the direction that water flows through campus. So Carrie is going to give you a few more details on where we propose to place the new detention areas. So after evaluating the various locations that detention could be provided on campus, looking at kind of where we had detention in place and all these other water quality and stormwater features, we found that there were really two ideal places to put detention. The first one is on the West Campus over near the existing Animal Services building where we have an existing basin. And we're looking to put about a half an acre foot of storage there. The other ideal location that was found was number two, which is an existing basin on the east side of campus over by the fairgrounds, where we're looking to put eight and a half feet, acre feet of storage in. A third area was identified as having problems. So it's not a place that we're gonna put additional stormwater detention in, 
but we found that there's some severe erosion around that pond that needs to be addressed. So that's something that we're looking to incorporate as well at some point in the future. Um, I'm gonna go into a little detail on what the detention improvements are in those couple locations. So next slide, please. So this is just kind of orientating you again. This is our campus. Um, the West Basin is going to have some improvements. And if we zoom into the next slide here, this is actually what we're looking to do. So it's an existing basin out there. We're looking to double the amount of storage that's going to be provided in there. So we're going to add another half an acre foot. The blue color is a little bit misleading. It's not actually going to be open water. It's going to be a wetland bottom basin um, that's going to be designed to meet the water quality requirements of our ordinance. The green that's all around it is going to be um, native prairie seed. Um, so that'll also help with just some infiltration of pollutants and other things. So that's again our West Basin. If we go to the next slide, this is again just to kind of orientate you. So we're going to zoom in now to that East Basin and I'll walk you through the improvements that are proposed there. So again, that's that east pond on the east side of campus, where it's the solid orange part, that's where we're actually looking to expand the basin and we're going to put in about eight and a half acre feet of additional storage. So that's all going to be new storage that's going in. We're going to have to do a little bit of rework to the gravel road that's out there to accommodate that. So the existing basin, that's going to all be converted to a wetland bottom basin. So again, that's going to be a big water quality benefit out there. So the picture on the right um, is something similar to what it may look like in the end. So we're going to have a lot of native plants around it. There's going to be probably a low flow area through the middle where the water will be conveyed continuous flow, but then we'll have plantings all around it. So that's what the big orange circle around it where we're saying convert to wetland bottom may look like. Um, of note, that's actually our DUCOM site over on the west side of campus that Tim and Jen worked on a few years ago. Um, the other pond there on the far left side, that's going to remain open water and as is. Again, we're just going to be doing some improvements to the banks for stabilization and erosion purposes. So next slide. So currently our team is working on getting plans and permits submitted for our immediate campus needs. And those are the couple projects that are going to be happening in 23. So we have the Child Advocacy Center, expansion of animal services, and then the proposed ADA parking. Um, those three projects require approximately four acre feet of storage. So because those are our immediate projects, we are working on getting the stormwater permits and plans submitted this month for them. Uh, next steps moving forward, Tim is going to just talk real briefly about the next slide. And then he's going to talk to you you'll be seeing soon. So first, what they, what, I just want to reiterate a few things. One is... Um, we will be consuming that land. That land that is now parking for the fair property will not be parking anymore. That'll be detached basin. So we want to make sure that the committee knows and understands that if you have any questions or concerns, we can go through that more. Another point is that will not be a pond anymore. It's going to be a wetland at East Warren. Um, that's two things. That's water quality. The other thing is, is that in, in my opinion, earth is actually a liability here. I don't want to, I'm proposing to you, we don't want to put that dirt on top of that hill. We want to create a wetland with it where it has the stormwater benefits from the pollutant removal, other benefits that has. So that's kind of what we're, we're proposing to do in 2023. Um, a majority of that work we want to try and do with in-house forces. Public Works has done a lot of great work here with some assistance from grounds, from stormwater, and then from uh, Public Works leading the charge for us. We can do a variety of that work ourselves. In order to get this done, we need to get our permit in. We, we uh, you as a board, approved a contract with B3 for us on uh, February 22nd. We've carried that permit as far as we can. For example, when we issued that permit, we did not understand the extent of the work we were doing at the care center. We are doing, a, we are proposing to you as a board to do improvements outside of the care center when we work that that requires detention. DOT has carried their project along. We know exactly what their detention needs are. So we're going to meet all of them. <laughs> we're also going to build, an, we're also going to build additional storage when we're doing this work, we want to get it done. So we'll have storage for future projects. In my nine years here, it is amazing how many projects pop in out of nowhere that you don't dream are going to happen. A lot more of course coming, so we'll have it ready. But if uh, I'm hoping that in two weeks, if not at your December meeting, we'll have a contract to take the V3 work into phase two, or, which would mean that would get us all the way through permitting and through bidding. Um, as we're bidding that work, there's some various activities we've pursued, how we want to propose to bid that to you. We're still working through that, but um, I, we anticipate having that out to you in uh, 15 to 30 days for the contract to extend that work. 
Um, we, we do need to, we are planning to break ground in March for animal services. So we need to have this detention moving in line quickly enough to have the animal service space and moving when we break ground for that. So we're, our construction schedule is, it's tight, but it's comfortable. Um, as I said, we went out in November of last November of last year to award this engineering design work. So all these pieces are moving together as a large conglomerate. Um, and that's where we're moving from the strong other piece. So that's kind of where we are with our next pieces. Any questions? I have a question. Never turn, turn. So the parking area that you're you're it's going to be eliminated. That's basically the parking area. That's the gravel area between where the parking garage is and the fairground. It's, it's, a, it's a piece of it. From memory, it would probably be about 10, 15% of it, correct. Uh -huh. But uh, one more slide. Okay, well, 10, 15%, I guess, isn't as problematic to me as what I thought you were going to say, because not only do we, is there a, an issue with parking there for the fairgrounds, but you know, there's a lot of overflow parking for the courthouse. None of the, none of the pay is pay parking is going to be removed. This none is this is the extent. This shows the extent. Well, of, not the pave. The, 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 the kind of gravel area right. that I mean, and, people park and, there all the time. And Jim has been gracious with us. We try to extend the parking from here also into this area up in here. So as the overflow goes, we've continued onto the asphalt surfaces, as as you've probably seen, Sam. We block this off in the winter because at times people park when it's 25 degrees, they come up four hours later, it's 40 degrees. This much of this grass thawed and they're stuck, they can't get out. So we, we recognize that, we recognize this is gonna have to probably be repaid in about two or three years. This is kind of the area that we're looking at and what we're look, proposing is this fill here would then go with the committee's consensus into the basin to create the wetland. Our, our plan B would be to take this fill and put it on top of the hill. So what happens with the gravel road? We would move that. We would push the gravel back. It would be reconstructed. To the we would save as much of the gravel as we to can. To the east. You would just, so it would basically look the same. It, correct. The, the gravel lose, pretend it would, it would hook out like this. Mm -hmm. So you'd lose that 60 by 20? Correct. But with the nine acre feet, it needs to be created somewhere on campus. And with that, we're proposing this is the best location. Jen and Nick and I have spent weeks over the last nine years going through this. This does uh, something to keep in mind too, because uh, with the, uh, there is a grant out there for the additional paved parking in the fairgrounds. This detention will provide that, the needed detention for that as well. That was one that was not incorporated into that plan. This will solve the detention needs for the additional parking. A majority of the fairgrounds parking was never asphalt. Therefore, detention is required when you Put yeah, the asphalt. asphalt over asphalt that doesn't require any tension, but new asphalt where it never existed does. The grant you just referenced is that grant east of this slide, or is it looking at the a majority of it would be department. right in here? Okay, so you're not talking about anything asphalt in the grassy area. No, no, some of some of that in there, maybe the far right, some of that. I mean, they're still trying to work on the scope what they what they want to pay. But that central green space will not be stays green. Okay. Member say. Uh, for some of these, like the fairgrounds and animal control, we looked at pavers for any of this. We have. We when I did the analysis long ago, I oversaw the paving of um, the Cougar Stadium in we in Wheaton, in Geneva. Pavers about four times more expensive depending on the depth you want to do. That also assumes a forty-year life. Pavers are much more expensive. This is much more economical. Pavers are typically done for the water quality benefit. We're hitting our water quality needs based on the wetlands we're putting in the bottom. Um, we haven't ruled out pavers yet on animal services, but right now, that's not where we're going. Four times more expensive. Correct. So we it should, should as, as stewards of that, we should we should get rid of our paver and water quality program because it's not beneficial or the water we don't want to lead, we just kind of want to this is do much this is a much bigger water quality benefit than what pavers would provide. Much bigger. I, I know yeah, it's I, okay. from the treatment that wetlands so provide at pavers for the DOT portion. Okay. <laughs> Remember, well that's why I said for animal control and the fairgrounds. I mean, if we don't need to lose as much space off of that road, I mean, that might be something to look at. And, and I think it's, you haven't decided, it hasn't been decided, no. we'll work with stormwater for the, the final plans for that, correct? Right, correct. Right. Okay. 
Denver Chaplain. Can you treat the pavers like with ice and stuff? I mean, you can. The, the main thing with pavers, my concern has always been with pavers, and I, I don't know, I've, I've done a lot. I've done probably 30, 40 acres of pavers. Mm -hmm. um, the main thing is you need to have an adequate subgrade that holds the water and the subgrade needs to drain out. So you have to have positive drainage from the subgrade because the concern otherwise is that you'll consume, continue, let's consume enough water in there that it's gonna freeze. When water freezes, it expands 9% every single time and you're gonna heave your papers. So you've gotta make sure that you have a positive outlet for your papers. In other words, daylight somewhere. You know, I think maybe, you know, Similar to the electronic vehicles, where we can use the pavers and they make sense, maybe we try to encourage staff to do that. And where we can't, you know, we do that. Um, Any other questions? We have another question. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, moving on. Now we have discussion of the. One more. So I do want to thank these oh, guys. Yes, thank you, yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. We uh, a lot have, of work. We wouldn't have made this schedule. So, <laughs> okay, now we're going to move on to discussion of the fairgrounds lease. So, I know that we ran out of time last two weeks ago, and we'll run out of time probably today as well. But it is my understanding, uh, Jim McGuire uh, is here, but if Jim and Tim and Patrick have met. And from a staff perspective, there is a uh, agreement, tentative we're, agreement. We're very, very close. One more issue, but we're close to a tentative <laughs> agreement. Um, it's my understanding from the last meeting that there is a desire to wait till the new board is, is sitting. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. um, so we, we are still plowing forward. We'll get that final issue resolved. Um, with that, I, I know that uh, you are eager to get the, the new lease uh, inked because you're obviously having to book uh, events in 2023, but the second we have the final issue lined out, my suggestion is we send out the, the lease and maybe a summary email to committee um, so you guys can look at it and, and kind of go through it. But I, we would like to take it up almost immediately once the new board is, is seated for the benefit of, of Gem and the Fair Association. What did you say? Timing aspect. I mean, you only have one meeting in December. So, I mean, if they get it done, would you bring it to the next public works meeting or no? I really want to leave this until the next board takes their seats. Well, then, would there be time then getting any potential new board members up to speed on it? About, can we do a January first January, January meeting? Uh, we'll we'll bring it as soon as time. Jim's like, he's, he's January. He's like, eyes are rolling. So, I, I mean, and that's because I know the current lease expires September twenty three. If I remember, right? Yeah, and so it time is of the essence. Even if we do a special call, public works, whatever we want to do, it, it's up to the committee how you want to proceed. But here's the problem: it, it, even committee wise. It won't necessarily be the new committee, new constituted committee in December. It's going to be this current committee. January. And so January is a new constituted committee. I don't know. December. Committees, yeah. the committees won't be constituted probably until the January meeting. January meeting. Yeah. Uh, Whatever. Should we? Thoughts? Committee? What do you think? Well, Jim's got his hand up. So if Jim wanted to Go ahead, Jim. partake, if that's Mr. okay with the chair. Please speak. Yeah. Um, thank you. Uh, I'm sorry I missed the last meeting. I was out celebrating my 40th wedding anniversary with my wife. Uh, but I did get to review the meeting and some of the comments and stuff that were there. Uh, I've been involved with the fair for 24 years, past eight years as the manager. Uh, I've been coming to many meetings here for a while, some of them more enjoyable than others uh, over the years. Um, but one of the hardest things we have as association is direction. And for 24 years, to be honest with you, that I've been on this board, there has not been any clear direction. So I thank Mr. Zay for his comments that we do need to get this in clear direction. And we truly need it sooner than later. This past weekend, several thousand guests came out to enjoy the haunted flea market on Saturday, the train show on Sunday, and I mean several thousand, some of them and the civic people here at the events. And at the very same time, we hosted the early voting site for the residents of DuPage County. 
The grounds are a blank canvas that is transformed into a wide variety of uses. That was brought into the spotlight over the past two years with the county's response to COVID. We first opened our doors to the primary election on March 17th of 2020. Then building one was transformed into a PPE collection and distribution site for the county for the Office of Homeland Security and Emergency Management. We stepped up again with the infrastructure to support the very successful testing site, early voting for the general election, one of the most successful vaccination sites in the country, several more elections. And in the midst of all of that, we also brought forth the folks to have some fun at the dinosaur drive through event. We kept the entertainment park going. I have passed out a list of all the other activities that take place on the ground, the ground that many of you might not be aware of. The first two pages are government agencies that use our facilities and use them quite often. And they're listed out there, so I won't go into all of those. The next page is all the local not-for-profits that get great benefit from the fairgrounds and the activities that we support for them. The last page is the revenue generating events that take place on the grounds that gives us the dollars to maintain the fairgrounds and to support all those activities on the first three pages. Um, I just wanna address some of the concerns that were brought up that I saw in the YouTube video. Remember Zay, uh, I know our buildings in many regards, we need some improvements and we will grant that. But all of those buildings have gone through architectural inspection, uh, structural engineering inspections, and they have all been approved and recorded by the city of Wheaton. They're not falling down. They are strong, they are sturdy, they are there. Uh, I like your idea of uh, help and support because yes, we do need to make some improvements to those and to change some of the uses, uh, which we have been doing over the past couple of years. We thank the county clerk's office for their efforts for the new pavement that we just recently worked with the Department of Transportation. And we're excited about the opportunity coming this spring for another $585,000 to help with some stormwater management and also some new paving that really improves and makes our grounds much more comfortable for all the residents of DuPage County. The grandstands that we talked about, it is a problem, but the reality is that is probably the best built building on our grounds. It's not falling down. It's a solid concrete structure, structural engineers. The reason the building is closed because of spalling concrete because of improvements that past boards tried to make on the, the deck. We do have a quote, it's about $350,000 to bring that building up to snuff, maybe 400. Uh, that sounds like a lot of money, but the reality is to tear that building down and replace it with a new structure similar, you're talking six to eight times that value. We've put off decisions on that because we don't have a long-term lease. We, we don't have a future. Uh, having a future is very important for us. So that would be really helpful for us to make some of the plans, some of the things that have been discussed recently, uh, some of the events we've had, uh, having a long-term lease can allow us to go there. Uh, this past year's fair, it was the most successful financial fair that we have had in my 24 years on the board. We planned it to be smaller. Coming out of the pandemic, we weren't sure where we were at. DuPage has changed. Previous boards, previous management of the fair tried to continue the continual agricultural fair and invite farming communities from three to four counties away to come in and do our agricultural shows. Uh, and most people don't realize we give away about thirty-five dollars to $55,000 in premium money to those shows that take and leave DuPage County. Our decision this year was to remove those animals. We no longer are a production agricultural community. So we brought in animal displays, reduced our cost. It's still, we had sheep herding, we had dairy demonstrations, we had other animal displays, and we had our 4-H displays for our 4-H kids who do have an interest in agriculture. And we have new partners in garden works and was scarce with their stomach palooza. We're trying to make the fair more relevant to DuPage County. And we have some work to do there. And we would appreciate all of your support in that. Uh, there was also a comment about Demo Derby. Demo Derby, that's got a whole different thing. Uh, the cost of vehicles, new, new car designs, and the interest in the Demo Derby. I have a feeling the Demo Derby over the last 10 years is heading in the direction of circuses. It's not going to be around long. 
it doesn't make sense anymore. It's very, very difficult. So that's one we're probably going to be shelving. It's not going to be an event we have on the ground. Uh, member Trinitori, uh, comment about the assets of the Fair Association. All of the buildings, all of the infrastructure, all of the electric, the water, everything that's underground that you don't see is bought and paid for by the Fair Association and through our operations. That doesn't come from here. It's not on your line item budget. It's paid for by us. When we spend that money, which is $2 million over the past several years, it has to go into our accounting process into assets. Unfortunately, through the auditing process, which you're correct, it's depreciated to the end of the lease. That doesn't really correctly uh, record the value of those buildings and those assets to us as an organization, to the community who uses them, or to the county who potentially will own them in the future. So it's kind of a, a deal, but there is value in all those buildings. There truly is. Uh, there was great value this year when they stepped up and helped out in the COVID response for the county. There's value there. And it's important to try to record that, but accounting depreciation, the magic wand of that, uh, doesn't really record that properly. Um, member DeSarc, Member Chaplin, they're not here right now, but they brought up the idea of the AR-15 ban. February 14, 2018, the tragedy down in Parkland, Florida at Stoneman Douglas High School occurred. We were in a contract with the Pioneer Valley Sportsman Show. They were going to raffle off the following week in AR-15. <coughs> we entered into, we had two shows left with them on that contract. We entered in negotiations with them. We had them remove the AR-15 from the raffle. And we also had them remove the sale of AR-15s, high capacity weapons, bump stocks from the next two shows. They agreed to that. We moved forward with it. It was a big news flash. We had national news on the fairgrounds. I was on every TV channel throughout Chicago. Uh, Washington Post was here. National news across the country picked this up. We had done this at our fairgrounds. I was surprised that some of you weren't aware of it because I did receive a lot of calls from different county board members to discuss this. I talked to the chief of police, I talked to the sheriff uh, when this occurred. When we moved forward to the contract, we kept that restriction in place for any events that happen on our fairgrounds as the place where community gathers, meaning the whole community and the types of events we do family orientated and the fact that many of the atrocities that occur happened in the places where community gather. We decided to keep that ban in place. It stays in place until today. On July 5th of this year, a gentleman from that organization contacted us and asked if we would reconsider. We still keep that ban in place. The cost to us in a revenue stream from the show, which was a long-term 40-year uh, partner of ours, is well over $250,000 that we uh, have gone from our revenue stream in order to hold that position. Uh, we will continue to hold that position. We think it's the right decision for us as a community event space for all of DuPage County. My thing today, I ask your consideration. We're 70 years that we've been here. This is our 70th year on the grounds. It's the 184th year of the tradition of a DuPage County Fair. Uh, I'm passionate about the fair. I got involved with it because my kids were in 4-H. Most of the members of our boards are, have the same passion. That's why they're doing this. We serve the community and we serve the community daily with all kinds of things that happen on our fairgrounds. We ask that you consider to allow us to continue that, give us a future. Uh, I think we've worked out a really nice agreement. Uh, I think we work well with the staff. Uh, I think we have supported any of the causes, the needs that not only the county, but the city, other governmental agencies, District 200, we can park district. We work as a good neighbor and we work very hard to make sure that all of those things are done in a very safe, um, community minded way. So we ask your consideration. It is critically important to get this done sooner than later. Many of the events that we have looked for two, three, four year contracts and leases. We're talking right now to Ribfest. They're looking to go for a three year contract. 
It's hard for us to go to a three-year contract, but we end in September. We are working with uh, the American Public Works Association, and they're bringing all the public works from the Chicago area and the western suburbs to an event on our grounds. They're looking for a long-term lease. Uh, there's really good events. We do really good work, and I take great pride in what we do. And I just ask for your consideration to help move this forward, help us get some direction, and we might surprise you with what the future has for all of us. Uh, we do want to become more relevant to DuPage. We do want to have cooler events and opportunities for the community, but having a lease and having clear direction for our future is much more important truly than a succession plan for me. Because without having a succession plan for the whole organization, I don't really count. And for 70 years, we have found someone to take the place to lead this group. And I haven't been here for all seven. I've been there for a short while. So I thank you. Uh, and I hope that this can happen. And I hope we move forward. I think the lease has good protections in it for both. Uh, I think it has good cooperation in it. And I hope it has great opportunity for the community and for you guys as the board. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Torrent Turret. In the 10 years I've been on this board, that the relationship between the board and the fairgrounds has changed significantly. And, and I'm pleased with that. And what the fairgrounds did, particularly during the uh, pandemic was instrumental in keeping us uh, healthy. So to, that ex to the extent that the lease has been negotiated and there's one area that you need to, to get to and assuming that that can be resolved, I don't know why we're waiting for a new board. We don't wait for a new board for anything else. And if time is of the essence and the lease has passed muster, if you will, with staff and pretty much everybody's in agreement legally and, and for every other reason, then, you know, unless somebody can give me a better reason, then let's just put her off to another court. I don't know why we're doing it. Let's, let's move back. Uh, because the reality is that we wouldn't be looking at this till probably the third meeting in January. By the time you get a new committee, um, nothing's going to happen in December. The committees are going to be formed essentially, realistically, in January. And who That's knows? Three months. And who knows who's going to be on that committee? Who's going to have any interest? And they might not even know what the fairgrounds are if they're if they're new. We're looking at three months, essentially three months from now. Um, and, I, and I don't know, again, I know you said you wanted to move to the next board, but if there's, tell me the reason, because I don't, we're not putting anything else off, essentially, for new boards that I'm aware of, that, and this is the lease, the lease isn't going to change. I mean, the reality is the terms of the lease are going to be what they're going to be, maybe a, a tweak here or there, but if that could get worked out now, then let's sign it and let's get Jim the direction that he needs. The relationship is different than, than, it, than it's been. And I think everybody understands that. And, and you know, Jim's come around, we've come around, the, the, the authorities come around. So I, I don't know, I really don't know why we're, we're waiting. Unless again, you've got a, a reason that I'm not aware of. You, know? you make a very good point about committee formation. I mean, I've, I've now been through that twice. So that's a good point about when we actually would get to this. We won't do this for three months. It would at It'll least be, end of January. be the end of January. So there's that. Um, my, and Madam Chair, my issues weren't about the lease. My issues were trying to get them help for these buildings and, you know, do something. Nothing that I know they're all sound and we've gone through all that stuff with Wheaton, but it would be nice to, you know, put some new stuff up there so we can get some grants, see if we can do some other stuff. But the lease has nothing to do with it. I agree with Sam. I mean, if we we're the ones who have been through this for the last, you know, four years. I mean, three of us at least. I mean, we know what's been going on. So if they can get it done, I mean, I would rather just move forward and, and get it out of the way. I mean, if that's well, I think we can all, okay. We can all agree the 2016 issue of selling the fairgrounds is off the table. So um, how about- Unless Harris comes to us with a big offer of, you know, and that's not. <laughs> okay, I don't think we're gonna have that. So uh, you said there's one major issue left. And I, if, uh, what we can do, uh, I, I'm confident that if the direction of the committee is to bring it to the next committee, 
I'm confident by the end of this week, we can have that resolved between state's attorney staff and Jim McGuire and his staff. And we could get that out to committee by the end of this week, Monday at the latest. So you guys have a preview of it. And then we can bring that forward for consideration at the next public works if that's the will of the committee. I mean, what Jim says, the roof, and we've been asking Jim to get bigger events. Now he's got a bigger event. If we drag our feet, he's, he's got and the he biggest loses event it, then, there, yeah. you know, then we're kind of shooting ourselves in the foot. You know what I mean? So, I mean, I'd rather, you know, so he can go into the new year with, hey, I got my lease, we're ready to go. Hey, what do you need? And he can start planning his stuff out. And you, how long is the lease going to be? Do you have a current lease with them for this coming year or? You're in the we are in the process of negotiating the contract. I'd like to go to a three-year contract. And I have several people that I'm on hold with right now who want to do that. And we have planning, even one year out, we're already past the people who are looking for November, December next year shows that we just currently finished. They want to book it for next year. I'm unable to do that because you know, the <laughs> we on the current lease, when we're negotiating, what we do have in there, we have a knockout clause that that either party can exit the lease with, I think, three years notice, um, which is about the time you need to plan it. If, if we have a federal courthouse come in, so we, no matter how long it is, there's a three-year knockout that the board can. can how long are we talking? Are we talking 10? Are we talking how many no, years? No, it's 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 25 or 24. 2040. 2040. 2040, yeah. But a three-year <laughs> knockout, which I think gives protections for everybody. The world does change, and when it changes, and it's a necessity that the developments that you guys were just showing today come, we're understanding of that. And, and uh, are you looking at, excuse me for a minute, about, for instance, the Rib Fest, three to four years, or is so anything? Three year, three year three years is what we're looking at. Does right anyone now. talk to you or look for longer than four? Is that general? On occasion, but that's hard for us to plan out the four year. We Three year is more what we try to stay with. Which would, um, be, which would be within the constraint. Of we have a quilt show that comes every two years, and they like to go out two contracts out to two dates, which is four years. And it's, it's, it's a big event. It, it is a big event. What's 2040? 2040 would be the end of the new lease. So it's an 18 year lease? 18 with three year knockouts. And, okay. and there's, so an 18 year. There, I, there's I, a rhyme or reason for that because Jim gets state money for, for uh, they give him yearly money through the state state budget and they do require a longer lease. And that's where we, we the three-year knockout allows that's fine. to solve I'm three, that. You have to have it so that you yeah. can go three years out. Can I ask a question? Yet. Tim, Patrick, the final issue in there, do you think that we're close to achieving? Uh, I don't know if we could be talking about this in open session. Oh, I, 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 do we, negotiation with the rest of the right, are, are we getting close? Do we feel like? I got a front of Patrick on this, so it's more his issue. I know you guys are negotiating. Right. We, we will hammer it out. Okay. Right. We'll lock you guys in a room. And so if we negotiate, if we come to an agreement, I'm good with going ahead. Bring it forward to the next public works meeting. Yeah, if it's worth I, I, yeah I, that's that would be my suggestion. Excellent. Yeah. And eighteen years is what we're looking at at this point. Yes, maybe okay. eighteen. The funding mechanism that you're talking about, it's a reimbursement for our expenses for a fair for the fair from the okay. Department of Agriculture <coughs> our uh, promoting agriculture, which is the largest industry in the state of Illinois. So it's a reimbursement that we get for doing an agricultural fair. That's what that's what the dollar is, but that's one of the stipulations is the long term. And the animal um, events or displays that you bring are sufficient. You don't have to have Bring the, bring we're the looking this year is a nice center. no this year is a nice base for us to to move forward with and to rebuild the fair to again to be more relevant to who we are as DuPage County. but they're willing to talk about gardening and other exactly. issues that you talked about yep. okay all yep. right that's garden works and uh, some of the things like that landscaping that yep. that's okay yep. okay uh then we will await maybe friday and Except if not friday we'll, or Monday, if we we'll talk about it at our planning meeting for sure yeah, next month we'll okay um, okay, we'll go ahead. Sounds good. Any Thank other you. comments or questions? Okay. Just you. Okay. We got no more comments or questions. Okay. In in that case, any new business? Any old business? We'll do it at the next one. But I will say that Greg has done a phenomenal job with the ARPA Water Connection Program. We'll give committee an update at the next meeting that 
He's had, I, you've processed how many, Greg, just as a, about 35? 35 so far, people that we have new connections in DuPage County for Lake Michigan water. So it's been very successful. So we'll give a, uh, there goes the there goes the <laughs> So we'll give an update of next committee. <laughs> okay, no more old business, any new business? Hearing none, uh, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.